Hello, Tony Walker here. Got a Bible review for you this afternoon. Realize it's been a while. Those of you who subscribe to the channel and watch these shows as they're uploaded, uh, it's been uh, quite a many months. Can't remember off the top of my head. A um, little different situation uh, in now than I was when those first the, that first wave and second wave of Bible reviews came up. So, uh, just in a few short words, the the purchasing of Bibles and various products has basically stopped. And uh, which means that the reviews of Bibles and various products has also stopped as well. Uh, but one thing that I did have come across my way recently is a Holman King James Version study Bible in premium black genuine cowhide. Uh, retails for $179, which I promise you is outside of my means right now. So, uh, very appreciative that this Bible was uh, passed on to me so that I could do a review on it. And I uh, plan on giving this to a, a person in our church who had been warning of that they have a relative who has one. And that relative said that when uh, they were going to try to get one for uh, their family for Christmas, that family member for Christmas this year. And so, uh, so this, this didn't cost me anything. This wasn't a, a sacrifice on my end at all. So I'm uh, just going to pass this on to the next person and, and let them enjoy it and uh, look forward to that. Um, now, I do have one of these. Um, there's a, a guy who watches the, the YouTube videos, and every so often he'll send me a, a credit or a, and a, an online thing and tell me to, to buy a little something for myself, and he appreciates the videos and the sermons and such and, uh, and the, the podcast that I upload at PreacherTony.com. And so... Uh, I, I use that to buy this uh, personal size study Bible hardcover. A um, little bit more manageable as far as carrying around. It's a hardcover, so I can I can throw it in my backpack and carry it home between home and church and study out of it and don't have to worry about uh, damaging the cover or um, the guilting getting scratched off the pages. So this would be more of a, a working beater Bible, or I say beater, uh, one that can take some abuse. So uh, I, I do have one of these. Uh, while I've got it, we'll do a little comparison real quickly. Um, give you an idea. Size difference. Uh, but when you compare the spines, really not a whole lot of difference. So the, the difference here is going to be in the height and the width. So uh, a little bit, little bit shorter, a little bit narrower. Um, but still just as thick as far as the spine goes. Um, but we'll open up that again in a moment to show you a comparison of the font size between the personal size and the study Bible. So uh, that hardcover's mine, but this one is one that was uh, uh, donated for to, for the review and um, I'm going to show, mainly show that to you today. Uh, first impressions, first impressions. When I opened it up, now you don't think of as, as Holman... Um, let me see how to word this. When you read uh, Bible reviews online, the ones that are the in the same circles as R.L. Allen and Cambridge and such, um, you don't have, and a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that sometimes people are either so against the King James Version or just... Um, Maybe if they're not against the King James Version, they're so pro other versions that they maybe think the King James Version is irrelevant or maybe the, the, the impact it had on English Bibles and such. Uh, it was good for its time, but maybe it's time to upgrade to something new and better or whatever. That, that's, I'm guessing that's probably got a, a lot more to do with it. Um, but for those who who use the King James Version and, and preach from the King James Version, have been in church with the King James Version, um, don't let the Holman name make you think, well, it, it may be genuine leather, but it may be that kind of genuine leather that you find on a, um, a $50 Bible at uh, Barnes & Noble or whatever. Um, the first thing I noticed when I opened this Bible up was the quality and the softness of the leather. Now, I realize that technology right now, although it may be there in the next hundred years if technology keeps increases, right now you can't touch your computer screen 
and feel the texture of what's behind that screen. Those days may come soon, but right now you can't do that. But take my word for it. Uh, the leather is genuine cowhide, and it certainly is a very nice leather. A lot nicer than I was expecting. Never had seen a Holman genuine cowhide in person before. I've seen the, the nicest thing that Lifeway offers, which is probably some sort of genuine leather. Um, with leather, generically speaking, no specifics. Uh, but the first time that I've seen this in person, the genuine cowhide, very impressed on how it is. Um, I've had a Bibles pass through my hands and done the reviews on them, and, and those of you who've watched the videos previously have seen that. And so, uh, one thing that the leather the leather exceeded what I was expecting. So that is definitely a plus. Definitely a plus. Um, you can look on the back. It's got your one, two, three, four, five, six raised tubs on the back. Um, adds another nice touch to it. Uh, I was also expecting to see gold stamping, and uh, so a nice little touch with the the black. Go with the the silver King James Version Study Bible and Holman. And just notice the simplicity. The version, the purpose of the Bible for studying, and the publisher. Uh, not to poke or mock fun at other uh, publishers who produce nice Bibles as well. But, uh, you know, simple, simple is elegant. You really don't need 50 million uh, logos of your uh, trademark stamped down the side of the Bible, which a lot of times you, you look at those and you say, man, those Bibles are pretty. Look at that. Look at that Bible. And then you, you pick it up and you look at the spine and it's like, it's like, uh, like seeing someone who in all other means looks like the nice and decently and, uh, fancily dressed. And then they, they pull their hands out of their pockets and they got 50 million gold rings and bracelets all over the arm and it's like I wish you just tamed down on that a little bit same thing could see could be said about other bible companies who maybe use this as advertising space more than what it's for just simply identifying the version the purpose and the publisher and that's that's really all you need down the side of the bible no per no point filling in saying well, there's a blank space. Let's put something there. Well, there's a blank space. Let's put something there. So I like the way they keep that nice and simple. Um, to go along with the, the silver on the spine, of course, you got your silver gilting on the on the page edges. I'll probably show it quite well. Get a good view. See it sparkling, glisten. And one thing that is nice as well. Well, those are marking some pages we're going to get to in a moment. Um, Color-coordinating color ribbons. Color-coordinating ribbing. So that, that's that's a good touch. As well as the, the tail bands and headbands is uh, also a black and silver color as well. So, very nice that it's color-coordinated. All right, inside of the Bible. Um, can't Again, you can't really tell virtually but if you were happen to see one of these in person uh you'd be able to tell how soft the leather is um bends back quite easily um folds quite easily as well so uh real real nice cowhide again can't can't state how how impressed i was at this leather had one thing in my mind that i was expecting when i opened the box and opening up to this was very nice indeed okay it is uh Got the end page pasted down right there. Presentation page. Certificate of marriage. Verse. Marriages. Occasions to remember. And this. And then the, the title pages. You can see full color title page. And that full color goes throughout the course of the Bible. Table of contents. That way you can see if it has a lot in there to, to meet your needs. Uh, introduction, features, contributors, list of maps, illustrations, and charts, abbreviation used in the KJV Study Bible, God's plan for salvation, steps to a classic, the epistle dedicatory, and the translators to the reader. Very nice. Uh, how to read and study the Bible, little essay. The origin transmission and canonization of the Old Testament books has a little chart on there and the origin, transmission, canonization of the New Testament books. 
And then you go through and it lists the books of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Each book has its own uh, very thorough, thorough introduction. Books of the Bible, additional features, table of weights and measures, King's English Glossary, Bible Concordance, daily and three-year reading plans, and some credits. Okay, introduction to the Holman King James Version Study Bible. Features, and this is typical of a page that you'll find going to have your text, uh, a new verse on each line, so it's not a paragraph format. It's not necessarily made for casual reading. It's made more for studying. So uh, if someone says, turn to, to Judges chapter 6, verse 31, um, you're not looking. There's a paragraph mark. There's a paragraph mark. If it was a, a paragraph Bible, verse 31 would be somewhere in the middle of this paragraph, which is, is fine if you're doing normal reading and maybe even talking about it with some people. Uh, but if you're quickly transferring yourself from some notes in your notebook over to verse 31, good to have that on the each verse on a line by itself so that you can quickly quickly locate it. Again, I've got Bibles completely different than that that I that I use for different purposes such as a you know a Cambridge uh, Clarion which is good for a reading Bible. That, that's one tool in my arsenal. But when my purpose is not reading but studying, I have different Bibles for different purposes. As I, I've said before, I've made the case before that uh, justifying that there's nothing wrong with having multiple Bibles that you use uh, just as a, a carpenter or a fisherman or a policeman or a soldier. They all have different tools for different situations. And a Bible is, is no different. It's a tool in the, the Christian's hand for helping themselves and helping others. And uh, some some tools are better suited for different situations in the, the Christian battle. So you got your uh, standard uh, two column, one verse on each line, or excuse me, uh, each verse starts on a, on a new line. And then uh, you've got headings throughout the text that give you an idea of what the following paragraph or paragraphs are gonna be about cross-references and some translation notes in there and language notes. And then the, I guess, the main uh, main feature, the study notes themselves. Um, you know, you may have study Bibles such as, um, don't have one in front of me, but sometimes you've got study Bibles that call themselves study Bibles, and in all honesty, uh, really, it's it's just the Bible, and it's got just a few notes sparkled throughout on, on maybe a handful of pages. Yeah, I guess technically you could call that a study Bible, but it's not what you would call extensive. Um, but the King James Version study Bible from Holman is what I would call extensive. Uh, throughout the Bible, in the study notes, you'll have uh, photos put in there. You'll have charts put in there. You'll have illustrations put in there. Uh, such as what a what a house would look like in Israel's time, a little four room house where the animals and such would be. Um, more example of what you might find. There's uh, some temples. There's uh, where the priests would go work. Some maps, a uh, 2D map, and then a 3D map, and then little apostles and their history. And there's a, another chart I'm going to show you as well on the Ten Commandments that kind of match that. Uh, artwork style. Introductions to each book. I'll show you one of those a little bit bigger. Contributors, give you an idea, some people involved. You got Dallas Theological Seminary, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, Westminster Theological Seminary, Vanderbilt, uh, University of Texas, and then uh, those will be the editors. And then as far as the study notes themselves, uh, rather than one man do all the work, get the, the best you can from the different sources and uh, let everyone give their input. And uh, you can go through and look for yourself at who was responsible and their uh, their qualifications, the things they've earned, degrees they've earned. You can uh, see that and maybe you know so-and-so and got an idea what he thinks about the book of Ezra. And maybe you know so-and-so in the book of Romans and you, got, you can flip over here and if you know this fella, you can look over to the Book of Romans and maybe have an idea of what his study notes would be like. Um, but they're they're very good. Uh, this is a list of the essays that are throughout the Bible. How to read and study the Bible. Uh, similar to 
what I read earlier, organ is it organ uh, origin, transmission, and canonization of the Old Testament books, uh, creation story, the exile, New Testament books, church discipline. Uh, you see some pretty famous names in there. Um, as far as the ones who write in write in the essays, uh, and you can see here as well. Got one on John one, the incarnation, Jesus becoming a human. Or God becoming a human? Did he cease being God? Answers that question. Um, the Bible and civil rights. The book of Philemon. Um, sure be a, a timely timely essay. Jesus and the atonement in the Old, Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 9. Look at Christ's priestly work. Salvation in the Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 11. Haven't read that essay yet. But if I had to guess. Salvation in the Old Testament. And he's talking about Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to say it's by faith. Just go out on a far-fetching limb and say salvation's always been by faith and it always will be by faith. List of maps, illustrations, and charts. So you can see it's not just a couple couple of pictures throughout the Bible like a children's Bible. They call it an illustrated Bible for kids and you open it up and it's just a regular Bible and it's got maybe four pictures in it. Not the case with this. Very thorough, very extensive takes up, let's say, one, two, three, four pages just to list those illustrations and charts and helps. Some more abbreviations. God's plan of salvation. God's plan of salvation. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, rose again uh, from the dead. And if we'll believe that, we can be saved. Steps to a classic. Outline. God, the marvelous work of God giving the English-speaking people uh, a Bible they can read and understand and amazing in the the way people these days desire new and desire up to date desires the ever changing there's a, a translation that 400 years later is uh, still holding its own quite well those of you on Facebook may have seen the the article go around maybe in the last six months a year ago about uh, the popularity of the King James Version compared to other versions and uh, Google searches and stuff. King James Version still right up there. Uh, translators to the reader. Well, excuse me, that's the epistle dedicatory. And then the translators to the reader. So, a lot of times people skip over all this and just get to the Bible themselves when, in all actuality, these features is what help make up a study Bible. So I want to give you an idea of what you're going to read. There was a Bible one time, I can't remember, or I, I do remember which one it was. A person did a YouTube video review of it, and I asked them, I said, uh, would you mind just doing a video? You know, we saw plenty of what the Bible says, but you know, the thing is a study Bible. Could you show us, could you tell me what's before Genesis 1-1 and after Revelation 22, just so I could see all those extras that that person just kind of skipped over? Here's a, an example of the essays that you'll find throughout the Bible, how to read and study the Bible, some practical plans and suggestions, suggest, suggestions, and then uh, five stages of thorough Bible study, and then you get into one of the articles. You'll find this one and then a similar one. In the New Testament, the origin, transmission, canonization of the Old Testament books, and then you got a little chart to go with it. Sources and authorship for Genesis. Divine inspiration right there. The Apocrypha, why well, it's not in this Bible. A little explanation about that and a little chart to help us understand that visually. And then, there you go. So all these pages, pre-Genesis 1-1, helps that you can have a good foundation as you get into God's Word. Each book has its own introduction. You'll have a paragraph just explaining a general idea of the book. You'll have a nice picture to kind of give you an idea of each book. Um, and each, each book has a different picture, different piece of artwork to go with it. Timeline, circumstance of writing, message and purpose where it fits in in the Bible, contribution to the Bible, and the structure. How's the, the book written? Is it a narrative? Is it poetry? Is it history? Is it prophecy? Etc. Outline for each book. Very thorough outline. Not just five points in a poem, but uh, points, uh, numerous points, as well as sub-points. 
with the references to go with it. And then, boom. Tony is uh, the, key, the Holman KJV Study Bible, uh, a thorough study Bible. Yes, it is. On this one page, it gives you an example. Now, I realize the first few verses of Genesis, a lot of times, are going to uh, often have more commentary than maybe a, a, a verse out of Ezekiel or whatever. But uh, this will give you an idea that uh, different matters, different issues aren't just skipped over and, and glossed over and ignored. Uh, but, for example, um, the creation days, uh, the gap theory, um, different things like that, they're not avoided. They're addressed in the notes. So, uh, in what is eight and a half verses, beginning in verse nine, and verse nine goes over to the next page, uh, you've got just a few verses and all these notes to help uh, give you a better understanding of what you're reading. You can see the idea of how many notes you're getting on each page. Another short essay here in the text. Uh, the uniqueness of the Genesis creation story, talking about Genesis chapter 2. And you flip through, and you can see you may have a few pages where the uh, verses take up more than the notes, but then you might turn to another page, and the notes are right back up there. So again, that's the reason this Bible is as heavy and as thick as it is, because it is a study Bible with notes galore. Okay, here's a little thing I wanted to show you, give you an idea. Chart on the Ten Commandments. One, uh, one column, you've got the commandment itself. You've got the passage it's found in, a, in a Exodus 20 and then over in Deuteronomy. You've got related Old Testament passages. Here you have the related New Testament passage. Um, Jesus teaching on each of the commandments you find. So, say for example... I'm not saying that you shouldn't do the, the study yourself, but let's say, for example, you're teaching a, a, a teen class or a teen youth uh, youth Sunday school class or even a, an adult Sunday school class for that matter or maybe a, a midweek study time. Um, you could take this and you've got 10 weeks worth of messages right there. Spend a week on each commandment. Talk about where it's at in the Old Testament. It's repeated again in the Old Testament. Related passages in the Old Testament that help reinforce that commandment. Is that is that commandment referred to in the New Testament? Let's flip to the New Testament and see what that passage has. And let's see what Jesus Christ himself, himself said about that commandment. And so there you've got, you know, if you wanted to use it for that purpose, there's you a 10-week sermon series uh, right there on the page. And then as you turn to each one of these... Uh, I'm sure close to a hundred, if not more, references in this chart, you're going to find study notes on those verses as well. And so uh, what looks like one line could become one sermon, and as you study the notes that go along with those verses, just going to keep expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding. Another thing I wanted to show you, another example of some resources you'll find here in Joshua's Cities of Con. Conquest. Maybe, or at least if, if your scholarly level is like mine, nowhere near where it should be, um, maybe you're a little more familiar with the Ten Commandments, but if you had to, if somebody put a gun to your head and said, okay, list these, may may not, in my situation, probably, uh, definitely, be not, not be able to do that. So this breaks down some of the things that you may not be as familiar with. The city, the scripture, was it occupied? And any comments about the, the battle. So uh, that's very nice to have those things. Especially throughout the Old Testament. A lot of times it gets ignored and skipped over. And just not as preached and well known as the New Testament. You see the notes in the Old Testament are just as extensive as the notes in the New Testament. Another example of a map you'll find. Out there to, to help you flip through. you got some artwork. More map. More notes. What I referred to earlier, the the story of Jephthah, and uh, and which uh, is a, a debate uh, in and of itself, Jephthah's uh, vow uh, gives you an idea of what kind of house he may have lived in back then, and uh, talks about maybe the animals and you know the way the house was. Maybe he was expecting the am an animal to come in, and. Uh, you can read the study notes to kind of 
tell you the interpretation about that. Flip on through. Old Testament, another example of a book introduction. Let's look over here to the book of Psalms, give you an example of what some poetry looks like, how it's laid out. Book of Psalms, introduction, picture. To go along with Psalm chapter 1, outline, all right, excuse me, outline, timeline. Same messages you'll find throughout all the introductions, circumstance of writing, message and purpose, contribution to the Bible, and structure. Outline for the book of Psalms a little bit different, uh, but here you got how they break down the book of Psalms, and this is normally where you're, you'd find your, your outline. So, Psalm chapter 1 from book 1, Blessings on the Godly. Psalm 1, 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And you see your notes. Uh, all these, this column and this column, all those notes to explain this right here. So again, still very thorough. All right, let's flip ahead to the New Testament. Got a page mark I want to show you. Reach down and get one of the color coordinating ribbons. Uh, red letter. So if, if you were wondering that, um, John chapter 3. Verse 3, Jesus speaking, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you got your red letter, still got plenty of notes. Flip over one page and here's you a full, a full page, full color map to help you out with uh, Jesus' journeys from Galilee to Judea. Another page I wanted to show you, getting to the book of Hebrews, talking about Christ's high priestly work and him dying for our sins, making atonement, uh, shedding his blood so that we could be saved. Jesus and atonement in the Old Testament. And it's got you a little essay right there to go along with the, the book of Hebrews and you read about the, the work of Christ. Okay, let's flip ahead to the end of the Bible. Excuse me. Revelation 22. You can flip through the book of Revelation plenty of notes to tell you about all the things in the book of Revelation that give everybody questions and say what's this mean and what's that mean and what's all that and what's those signs and wonders Come here. There we go. timeline book of Revelation outline and then Revelation 1-1 Okay, you get to the end of Revelation, then you get some more things that I want to take the time to show you. To, to show this is a study Bible. Tables of weights and measures. Got your weights, your length, your biblical unit, uh, the language the word is, biblical measure, um, the U.S. equivalent, the metric equivalent, and how it is in uh, English translations. Dry measure, liquid measure. King's English, glossary of terms used in the King James Bible. For example, let's look over here. I don't even know that it would be in here, but I'm going to assume that the word prevent is normally in, uh, if I know how to spell and find P, prevent. There we go. Uh, to proceed. So there you go. There's a, a pretty common word that you find maybe explained in the margins. Uh, we should... Uh, we shall not prevent them which are asleep, be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord, and there so shall we ever be with the Lord. The idea, you know, we're not going to prevent them, hold them down. We're not going to go before them. They're going to go first. So um, I was sure that word would be there. Um, words like that, for example, words that um, maybe are spelled a little different or sound a little different or have changed a little bit give you an idea of what those words mean. And then after that, you've got the concordance. Give you an idea of what to expect there. And there you go. There's God. God takes up about three-quarters of a column. Uh, God, Godhead, Godliness, Godly, 
and guides. Um, so if you've seen the, the other videos, a lot of times on the concordance, we'll flip back and just give you an idea how many entries for God. And uh, there you can find that. And then you get to the end. You've got your reading plans. They give you a, a one-year reading plan. Read through in a year. And then they also have a three-year reading plan. Three-year reading plan. A few maps. Full color. Thick paper. High quality. Tad bit of, tad bit of shine to the page. So make the, the artwork a little more vibrant. And then got one blank white page in the back for the end paper, or the which is the opposite side of the end paper. And that's pasted down to a genuine cowhide black leather cover. Uh, just just for let's see, we've already been talking about a half hour. Um, let's just give you an example what to expect. far as the size goes there you can see there you can see the introduction from Malachi its size comparison flip ahead to chapter 1 give you an idea of the size of the text Paper, paper in both Bibles, nice. You can see there's very little bleed through. Um, there you go. You can see the same same page numbers. So if if you want to buy some of these for your students in your kids' class, or you, you want to recommend this is the one they get, and then uh, maybe you as the teacher want to use something that your eyes are a little bit easier on your eyes, you can say. Uh, Today we're going to study, uh, start the book of Malachi. Let's turn to page 1559. They can open up in their, their small hardcover Bible as well. Still turn to page 1559. And uh, not only will the the chapters and all uh, start on the, the same page, uh, the, the layout is exactly the same, even down to, to what word ends the, going to the next page. See here, uh, verse 14 ends with the word sacrificeth. Same thing here in verse 14. Ends on the exact same thing. So this is a just a, a shrunk down. Well, I, I don't want to say it's a shrunk down image because sometimes that is uh, has some bad effects on quality when you do that. But you can see this is laid out just as nicely as this. Uh, didn't take any shortcuts. Uh, the words look clear and legible. So there you go. Give you an idea about that not a whole lot different as far as the font a little bit smaller but uh, just enough where it makes a difference in what you hold in your hand so again uh, that's the Holman KJV study Bible a couple more Bibles that some of you may be familiar with just to give you an idea of comparison uh, Cambridge wide margin Bible uh, you've seen my video on that so um, almost pretty much the same size it's Concord wide margin one that a lot of people are familiar with especially those who watch Bible reviews on YouTube but as far as the thickness goes this will show you how, how much material is actually in this Bible um, those, so those who know that the, the Cambridge wide margin is pretty thick this will give you an idea how thick this is. And that's not to shy you away from it and knock its size. That's to push you towards it, showing you how much uh, study helps are actually in that Bible. So that's the comparison to the Concord. Another Bible a lot of you are probably familiar with. little Bible a lot of us carry around, the Pit Minion. Uh, nice little Bible. There's the size. And you can see there. You can see there. A lot more in the one on the left than there is the one on the right. So, uh, can't recommend this enough. Very nice, as I said at the beginning. The leather and the, the construction was a lot nicer than what I was expecting. They didn't put just one little skinny ribbon that didn't match the color in there and call it a day. Halfway over here, jagged and pointing out that direction. They took the time to place the ribbons in the center. 
pick color coordinating ribbons to match the, the stamping on the side and the color of the page uh, gilting on the edges. So if you got any questions, as always, be sure to put those in the comments. I'll do the best I can. Uh, if you need a picture, maybe um, comparing the, a font on this page compared to one in the personal size, and you'd like a closer up look or maybe a, a font size comparison, anything at all uh, pertaining to that, just let me know, and I'll be glad to help you out best I can. So uh, I appreciate those of you who watch the videos. Uh, again, uh, the Bible reviews as well as everything else pretty much has slowed down drastically in the last half a year or so uh, but i'm still here so i uh, appreciate y'all watching the videos and and sharing those and passing those along take care have a good day the lord bless you